Hey, how about you, everybody? Welcome into the Auburn Live Recruiting Show. I'm your host, Jeffrey Lee, Senior Recruiting Editor for Auburn Live on 3. Today is Wednesday, February the 21st, 2024 for you. We're, we're, we, are, we are recording this Tuesday, February the 20th, so keep that in mind moving forward. We will try to, uh, to, uh, to, to stay on page. On the calendar, if you will. Uh, we've got a fantastic show for you today. Recruiting is back, or it will be soon, but it has been. We've got some combines and stuff to talk about. we got recruiting questions. It's a fantastic show because Mr. Cole and Mr. J. Head are both here. How about you, fellas? How about you? <laughs> How about you, big dog? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> so, yeah, for anybody listening, man, it took me three times to get that intro down, and I still didn't get it down. <laughs> Zach, Zach in the back says, uh, not going to lie, they had me in the first half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm Zach in the back. I hear you, big dog. Um, how about you, fellas? How about, how about you, man? How about you? All right, back yeah. with the recruiting show. Didn't miss a beat with the recruiting show, but it's been a little slow. This is the middle of the dead period. The dead period uh, ends March the 3rd, so the first weekend, the first Monday of March is when it'll kick back open. Auburn starts spring practice on February the 27th. So... There will be visits, lots of visits in March. Spring break for the high school kids will be in full effect throughout the month, different states, different weeks. There's going to be kids all through the month. Get locked in for us. We're going to talk recruiting today. We're going to talk the Atlanta, uh, Carrollton, Georgia combine, uh, Under Armour, I'm sorry, Under Armour camp in Carrollton, Georgia that Cole attended. And we're also going to get some questions from the corners on a couple of how bad for some uh for some Auburn Live subscribers that deserve it. Before we get to it, we want to say if there's anybody in or around Auburn, Opelika, Lee County, if you want to move into Auburn, Opelika, Lee County, look no further for the help you need. Miss Jessica Andrus with the Talents Group. Give her a call, 334-704-4442. She is a five-star realtor. If you don't believe me, just ask me. And uh, she will absolutely go above and beyond anything you could hope for, for a realtor, I promise you. It's ridiculous sometimes, but she's really good, I promise you will not be disappointed. Give her a call, 334-704-4442. Tell her we sent you. Oh, man, I, I, I'm not going to lie. Zach. That, that intro did have me in the first half. It did. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It had me in the first half. I ain't going to lie. Uh, hey, first, uh, first off, Cole, you went to the Under Armour camp or combine. I don't know what they call it these days. It used to be a combine, and then it was a camp, and it was, I don't know, Under Armour. Uh, Event. Event. Nice job, J. Ed, with the vocab. Mm. Uh, Cole, let's see. A couple of – how about standouts? Like, you walked away from that going. These three yeah. or four guys were like, okay. First of all, you you wrote on Auburn Live on three that the one thing you noticed from that camp, the one thing that stuck out to you is that all these guys that Auburn has, has offered early, the staff targeted <clears throat> early, passed the eye test, if nothing else. Right. Well, what I did I, I, when I got the roster, when I walked in that morning, and it, and the official name is the Under Armour Next Camp Dash Atlanta because they do it in Atlanta, Orlando, Hawaii, California, all this stuff. Anyway, they're too good uh, for Carrollton. Yeah. It's at Carrollton High School, which is, you know, the best 40 minutes west. Best. It's 40 minutes yeah. west at least. I mean, I don't think you're going to find a better facility anywhere. But anyway, um, I went through the roster when I first got there and I picked out all the guys that I know for sure are number one committed to Auburn or a huge target to Auburn. And I had about probably 30 names. Um, but I don't like to just watch the Auburn guys. I, I watch every single guy I want to see. I want to compare, you know, to the best of the best. I want to compare to the guys that are sleepers. I want to compare everybody. And it just so happened that it's the Auburn guys that were the standouts. And I wouldn't, I've been to two of these camps now. I wouldn't say that for the other two. This time it was different. The guys who are heavily affiliated with Auburn were the guys who stood out in camp, period. Um, and some names for you Malik Autry. You start oh, there. Okay. Auburn commit. First of all, uh, my eyesight's not great. They had us behind a certain like rope, I guess you would say, across the field. All the D linemen are, are, you know, lining up to do their stretches. I see this one guy, and I'm like, like man, guy right there is huge. And they started running towards us. It was Malik Autry. I'm like, dang, I didn't know he would look like that compared to the other guys. I mean, we're talking about elite talent here. The best that the Southeast has to offer for the most part. 
So, um, you know, off the hoof, he looks like that, and then he has a good good camp. He's good in agilities, wins some one-on-one, stuff like that. Um, I liked Kale Ellis, who was committed mm. to Auburn. And I haven't gotten to see him yet. That was the first action I've seen him. He moves well, and he's taller than I thought. Kale. Six, Kale. Okay. Yeah, 6'3", probably. Okay. Probably that 6'3 range, uh, maybe 275, 280. Uh, moves well. I liked what I saw from him. I think Auburn's got a nice little um, you know, early pickup on the O-line there, which is <laughs> – when was the last time we said that? All right. Uh, other guys, let's see. I had an article on this today. Uh, uh, Dice. Der- Tavares Dice, okay. Tavares Dice. He was the best O-lineman to me. No, I'll take it back. Juan Gaston was probably the best for okay. what his potential is. You can see it. It's just – it's he's just, you know, uh, he's all about some potential, that guy. Frame, he can move. His one-on-ones are good. His pass set's good. And then Tavares Dice to me is the smoothest of the whole group. He was smooth. He's a tackle. He's okay. a true tackle. So, and, and I, and by the way, I love where Auburn sits for Tavares Dice. I was going to ask you, 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 you think, I think he told you March. Yeah. Well, you know, he was at Auburn February 3rd, right before the dead period. And he said summer. Right. And before that, he was saying fall. So now we're at March. And the visits he's taken as Auburn. So, come on. I mean, right. th- th- that's got to be it, right? A lot of other things tell me that, but the visits alone, you go, yeah, that's probably going to be Auburn. Which is was, why I think Auburn has a good shot for Dontrell Glover, too. Despite what you may have heard on Dontrell Glover, I think Auburn's right in the thick of it. He's talking out of both sides of his mouth, it seems like. It's interesting, you know. Or, I, and, and not intentionally. I'm not. It's not a slight to the kid. I'm just saying – yeah, well, I think he talks he, to different reporters, and you get different reports. Sure, I think he opened up his recruitment. He's taking a hard look at all these schools he's naming. Um, Auburn just hasn't been mentioned as much. It's funny though, you know, standing in line waiting to interview him with all the other reporters there for all the different schools. It's almost like when I got there and mentioned Auburn, he 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 lit up a little bit, and he was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, Auburn. Okay, let's there talk about are. Auburn." Yeah, and he he gave me some, you know longer quotes than he was giving most people. He was talking kind of, you know, yeah, yeah. And then opened up a little bit with Auburn. So that I, I study those kind of things. I think it's important. Sure. And, and and of course, you got Tavares Dice, who he talked about as well, and, and was like, where's Tavares at? Bring him over here. You know, I know that guy's probably going to Auburn, that kind of stuff. Uh, so I think Auburn's in it with, with Glover. Um, Mario Nash is a guy I wanted to talk about. <sighs> Jay Head, I don't if you watched this film and all that. I have. I liked I liked him in camp. Um, he does have an Auburn offer. He's from Mississippi, DeKalb, Mississippi. And dude's got great feet, tackle feet. So he stood out. He he beat Jared Smith a couple times, who Jared Smith was another standout, the guy from Thompson. And uh Vodney Cleveland guy from Prattville and a 2026 guy, and then a 2026 safety Zealous Hicks from Parkview. Loved those two. Two more guys. Yeah. Talk to us about Duke Johnson, what you saw from him, Cole. I think he's absolutely somebody that we need to pay attention to. And then the young man from Grayson. Give us a give us a rundown on oh, him. Yeah. Uh, well, Duke Johnson, first of all, if you've missed any updates on him, Auburn, he says, is in his top four. He's going to take a spring practice visit, and he's going to take an official visit at Auburn. Two visits lined up for him. And it, it, they'll be his first. When he goes in the spring, that'll be his first visit to Auburn. But Josh Aldridge made him a priority, he says. So I think this is a guy you need to watch. The two frames that stood out in the whole linebacker group and running back group, J.J. Falk and Duke Johnson, those are the two. So, as far as frame, he looks kind of similar to J.J., not as filled out, uh, more of an athlete. He could probably play safety if he needed to, but he's a linebacker, I think, and those are the guys that Josh Aldridge likes right now. Um, and then Tyler Atkinson. Boy, what what, what a, as you say, J.J., a freak show. Good gracious. Yeah. 
he's the number one player there, and it went close. Um, I think he's going to be the number one player in the class of 26, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he, he's the real deal. I believe it. I mean, anybody that I talked to that was there, uh, that was the first word out of their mouth was freak show. It, when, yeah. when they talk about describing him. I mean, look, I, I thought that about him when he was in eighth grade going through camp. Like, who is that guy? Oh, my gosh, that's an eighth grader. And now he's, you know, moved yeah. up and gotten even better than that. So, and Auburn's in it, by the way. Auburn's absolutely in that recruitment. He was on campus, I believe, in February, February the week. He was, and he, I believe he visited for two games during the season. Mm, okay. Let's see. I, I've, I've got some more questions for you, but I'm afraid that they're going to be asked in the questions from the corner. So let's get yeah. to the questions from the corner, and then I'll come back and, and hit you if, if we don't get to those, if uh, if our members didn't get to us. So yeah. let's see. Uh, Ace is full one. Hey, he, he had this up real early in the week, and a uh, fantastic question, fantastic time to ask it. Ace is full wants to know, this time last year you guys had one to two guys on offense and defense that were must-haves in this class. I think Joe Phillips, I think Kim Coleman he mentioned – or we mentioned, um, who do y'all see as that for this class? Who are the must-haves at this point in the year? So because of need, I'm going to go on offense. I'm going to go a Kylan Deer. I think running back, you have to get one in this class. You've got to get a good one in this class. I like it. I like it. And then I'm going to go with Tavares Dice, just because you need to get a left tackle on the board in this class He's probably the one you've got the best shot at right now. And I think the sooner you get him in the class, the more that – and this is a big offensive line class for Jake Thornton. I mean, I, I don't want to shade it any other way. It's a big offensive line class for him. You need kind of somebody to work off of. He would be a really good one to get into the boat, and I think that kind of sets the floor to your class, and it can only go up from there. So those are the two on offense for me. On defense, it's Eric Winters because of the need at linebacker. I think in-state – Linebacker, got to have it. Um, don't know on the other on the on the other one on defense. Like I, well, he said one to two. He said one to two. Uh, probably a pass rusher. I mean, I, that's the premium spot. And let me think on one that's a a premium outside pass rusher. You've already got Falk in the class, but you need one more. You need somebody to pair with him. Well, you've got Zion Grady, and you have the uh, the gas kid. Um, yeah. You know, when I think of this question, I remember uh, I go all the way back to, I guess it was the 2024, no, 23 class. We were asked a very similar question, and I think our answer was Keldrick Falk. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason for it was because, and he was committed to Florida State when we answered that question. It was like, you can't let that guy go to Florida State. Correct. You just can't. So who's the guy in this class that if they go somewhere else, it's going to be almost embarrassing. Yeah. Don't let that happen. It was Joe Phillips last year. Like, yep. you, you can't let that guy go to Georgia. I, I, I think Eric Winters was a great answer because I do know Georgia's coming on a little bit with him. Tavares Dice, to me, is, a, is, is one because – for whatever reason with offensive linemen, you've been right there with a lot of them and just can't close the deal. So you better close that one. <laughs> you know, you got to close that one on Tavares Dice because right now you, you've got the momentum if you're Auburn. Yeah, I agree. Uh, and, and that's it. I'm with you, Cole. That's part of it is closing, a, a, again, big offensive line class for Jake Thornton as far as how he's going to kind of be perceived right or wrong moving forward like and the need is there you're going to need to take five high school offensive linemen in this class you're i think you're graduating four or five you need to replace that with four or five so with what i just said would it be you know you use the word loosely embarrassing to lose alvin henderson to an out-of-state school i don't think so i i don't think so okay well you got you got a colin deer in there too that's you know, my perception on Alvin has changed somewhat. He's still a very talented back, uh, has really good vision. I question his size and the level of competition that he plays against. I don't know if Alvin's going to be able to play at 200 plus just looking at his frame. And this isn't me trying to shoot holes in the kid's game. Again, I think he's a very good player. He's a blue chipper. 
but is he elite in the way that I thought he was this time last year? Right. I think well, my opinions changed somewhat there. I'll give you my opinion from watching him at camp. Um, elite speed, really elite speed. Yes. Um, agility, probably not there, uh, with the elite category decent, but speed. Yes. I mean, are we talking four, four? Uh, yeah, hey, he's fast. I don't okay. know his official time. That was my concern with him. I think the Under Armour camp doesn't like to give us those times because they want to have course. it from their point. You know, they don't want us reported or whatever. But watching his forty, he had the best looking forty of anybody. Yeah, this, and this, watching him in drills, he, he's he's moving, dude. So speed wise, look, there ain't no substitute for speed. Okay, um, I, I see that as being his his key factor, uh, his key skill set. Um. But I'm with you on the level of competition. I think his agility is maybe not elite like his speed is. Um, but it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of maybe Rock Thomas when he was coming out of high school. Okay. If you're looking for a comparison. Okay. And Rock I Thomas was awesome in high school, by the way. Sure. Absolutely. He was. I'm gonna uh I'm gonna go listen, must haves if you all the guys we talked about in the past, Keldrick Falk, Joe Phillips, um, uh, Cam Coleman in-state kids. When I think of must-haves, like Cole said, embarrassed to let them get away. Uh, Tavares Dice absolutely is on my uh, – a Kalen Deer or Kylan Deer, whatever it is, because of needs. Absolutely. Yeah. Jay has said, that's what Jay has said. I'm going to go with on defense Anquan Figgins. Oh, I, yeah. I, that's I, a good cool one. I can't believe we missed that one. That's perfect. I I, I, I was like, y'all, please don't say it. Please don't say it. Please don't say it. <laughs> And that's why I cut y'all off. Like, hey, let me get in here real quick. Oh, yeah, I got Anquan Figgins. I know y'all hadn't thought of him yet. But, uh, and Derek Smith. Yeah, that's that's Derek a big Smith. one for us. But I, I think Eric Winters, absolutely need in-state kid. You, you feel like you've had momentum with him. So I feel like if Eric Winters ends up anywhere else, it will be, eh. You this know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. If Eric Winters goes to Georgia. Yeah. That, that hurts. That hurts. That, that That's – yeah, it, you can't How let that about this? Happen. What if you were to lose one of Malik Autry, Jordan Crawford, or Antonio uh, Coleman? And see, my, my, first, my, my first instinct was keep the kids you got on, at the defense line position because I'm thinking defense line, well, they've got three or four. Because I'm, I'm thinking Andrew Maddox, some of these guys on the defensive line um, who would be big gets. I just don't think if Andrew Maddox goes to you know Ole Miss – Yeah. That, it's not he's it is it's, it's it's not embarrassing. Now you lose and, and I'm not saying anything any of these guys would be embarrassing, but I feel like the must haves, at least from that list, of Ars Dice, um, Eric Winters, Anquan Figgins. I love the running back because it, you talk about would Alvin Henderson would would it be a shot at Auburn if he went elsewhere? Not if you get somebody better. Right. Like you Correct. know what I mean? I feel like you eh, Alvin I'll defer to y'all. I'm not ex uh, like Jay has said. I'm not excited about his Alvin as I was last year, and it has nothing to do with him saying Florida State is a top school for me or anybody thinking that. Um, no, and, and I mean I've been saying that I thought Florida State was a real player now. For you've been saying that for a long time, right? It, like that. That's where my intel was on that one, and it's not. Again, I think Alvin does have elite speed. I question his size and I question the level of competition. Like I don't know if Alvin's going to be able to play at 195. And I think to be a an every down back in the SEC, you've got to be 195 plus. I think the kid's probably 5'10, 5'9 and a half ish at about 175 right now. Can he put on 20 pounds in a college strength and conditioning program? I don't know. Cole, you saw his frame up close. What do you think? Um you said Alvin, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think he's, um, you know, he's got big shoulders. Like, he, he's got the broadness, but he's not a big person, if that makes sense. Now, right. Colin Deer. Colin Deer is a big person. I mean, he looks like a linebacker, and, and he does have good agility to go with that. So, there's a different skill set there completely, I would say. I, I think Alvin's probably got him on, on the 40. But sure, yeah, I, I don't think that that's why I said Rock Thomas because I don't think Rock Thomas ever had the frame where he was going to get huge, you know what I mean? And he didn't. No, I thought that was a perfect comparison. I, I mean, I, I can see a Rock now, Thomas comparison to him. I'm not saying Rock Thomas as if 
when he gets to college, he's going to be like Rock Thomas and not do what you thought right. he was going to do. I think I was going to be very good in college. I mean, Rock I, got drafted out of Jacksonville State. I, I believe he yeah. played with the Vikings for a couple of years. He so did. He did. just because he didn't work out at Auburn doesn't mean he still wasn't a really great back. Was he the one who right. lost a year of eligibility because he played special teams? No, that was uh, the kid that, that transferred to Memphis. Asa, Asa, Asa Martin. Martin. No, I'll get those two guys mixed up. Asa. Um, all right, let's see. This is a good one here, too, because we're talking about Figgins. Tigers Unlimited wants to know who's high on Auburn's safety board besides O'Anquan. I got some I got names it. for you. Okay, I do, too, I do too Cole. You, you go ahead. Um, uh, well, I've talked to Jonte Gilbert a little bit, who is Number a one on mine. He's a four star guy. I, I, he's from Atlanta. He's got Clemson, South Carolina, Georgia, all these schools. He's Told me he was going to visit Auburn in the spring. We'll see if that happens. Um, I I don't know where Auburn is with him quite yet, but he's one to track. Okay. Um, Hilton Stubbs is another one. Number two on my list. <laughs> From Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, we know that Charles Kelly, maybe Wesley McGriff as well, made a trip out to see him. Still hasn't been on campus yet to my knowledge, but, again, one to watch. Don't forget about Kendarius Reddick. I, I still think Auburn's in there with him. I don't think that one's over by any means. Now it's hard to get any information about him, but we're going we're going to try. We're going to see what we can find out. Um, th there's one more guy, Keon Young, who I've been in contact with a little bit. Uh, another Florida guy that is real high on Florida, but he likes Auburn too. I got one in addition to that. You basically nailed my list, Cole. But Fahim Delane out of the Washington, D.C., the DMV area, that's somebody I'm told that uh, has Auburn's eye. Now, he's very highly coveted. I, I think right now he's being projected to Ohio State, but a lot of teams are in the mix, and I'm going to be interested to see if he shows up on Auburn's campus in the spring. But somebody I think Charles Kelly's interested in. And don't be shocked. Like, if this is going to be an evolving position. We talk all the time about – new targets when you have new coaches. I think Charles Kelly's probably got some guys that he's looking at that we're not aware of at this point. Right. Absolutely. But it, it it's going to pop up. Like you're going to see those guys visit and, and we'll get a better feel for the safety board here soon. Hamburg Hamburglar wants to know if uh, we talked about Eric Winters and Georgia being a factor. If Winters were to commit to Georgia, do you think per Jaden Perlotti uh, would flip to Auburn? Jaden Perlotti out of Buford. I don't think they're connected from the Georgia yeah. standpoint. Uh, right. My understanding is Georgia's recruiting Eric Winters as a safety, not as a linebacker. Pilates purely a linebacker for, for Georgia, there you go. Which, which is interesting. So, no, I don't think it automatically means he'd flip. But Auburn put resources in more, more resources into flipping Pilates. Yeah, I'm sure they would. But there's some other targets out there, too, like Duke Johnson and a handful of others. Uh, the little John kid um, that they looked at. John, little John. Yeah, no, oh, oh, Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> oh, Johnny, petty Johnny. Uh, let's see. Oh, Hendo74 wants to know, how many defensive linemen uh, will Auburn take in the 2025 class? Who is at the top of the list that we need to watch for? Auburn has commitments right now from Antonio Coleman. They have commitments from Jordan Crawford. They have a commitment from Malik Altry. Malik yes. Altry. And Kalen Edwards. And Kalen Edwards, Caden Edwards, or is it Kalen? Kalen. Kalen, that's what I said. I, <laughs> so that's four. I, and all yeah. of those guys are interior DL. Those are those guys are zero nose, three techs, four eyes. Like none of it, none of those guys are edge players. So I'll be interested to see what they do at the five tech spot slash six, whatever they're gonna do. I, I don't know if they're gonna be more four down, three down, what they're gonna do. When we get into spring, we'll have a better understanding of what the base defense is gonna be and kind of how many DL they're going to take, but having four pure interior guys makes me think unless they get a special one, they're probably just looking at edge players at this point. You're looking for an outside linebacker and you're looking for a five tech, six tech, somebody that can uh, play either head up the tackle or over uh, off the shoulder to them. Um, and then an outside linebacker. So I don't know. Who do you guys have? It, like I, I've been looking at the defensive line board and Maddox can play that five tech spot, but who do you guys yeah. think is probably that missing piece? I tell you what, I have something to uh, – I just talked to him. Talked to him. Uh, Auburn just offered him. Cole sent him to me. Landon Rink. Okay. Big defensive lineman out of Texas. Uh, Montreal Williams, DJ Durkin. And who's the new defensive line assistant? I think his name was like Cora. 
Um, it came with Durkin from A and M. Yeah, I can't. I can't remember. Either way, all three of these guys were on the phone with this kid and offered him a scholarship Tuesday night. I'll have more on him Wednesday, but um, he, he loves DJ Durkin. Durkin and that defensive line assistant. Oh, gosh, what's his name? I think it's Cora or something. Anyways, uh, really love this kid. Love his versatility. Could play anywhere according to him. Three to the five. Um, so that's another guy. I mean, they're still offering defensive linemen. Which is crazy, right? Given who they already have in the class, you're going to continue to take more interior defensive linemen, which, again, it's a need. I mean, I think we've talked about it. They need some transfer portal guys in this class. Maybe they end up taking some one-year guys so they got more spots than we think. Landon Rink is the kind of uh, Brett Edens type. Ooh. Love it. Hey, Zach, are you listening? I'm going to show, share his page. Ooh, Jeffrey. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Yeah. Got offers from Cypress, Texas. Okay. 6'2, 260. Yeah, sort of your um maybe undersized somewhat. At 6'2, six, 6'1 six, and a half. Yeah, you three think technique. Maybe he's a three technique, maybe he's a nose. Um I haven't watched him yet, but He's brand new. I mean, he just got the offer, so that's a guy. I'm, I'm anxious to see your update on him, Jeffrey. And um, surprisingly, pretty upbeat, pretty fired up. He's going to try to make it to the spring game April the sixth. See okay. what there, there's there's a ton of 2026 D linemen that I learned about at, at the Under Armour camp. I, I would say for 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 now for 25, London Merritt's a guy that I keep in touch with a good bit. He he talks to Auburn. He's sort of an edge, but but could play the five two. Uh, another kind of undersized guy, but boy, he's good. Good player. He plays at IMG right now. Um, Andrew Maddox, I think, is the top dog. Yeah. I think he he definitely was with Jeremy Garrett. Right now, I think Jeremy Garrett and Montrell King Williams have very similar boards. I don't think they're going to change a whole lot. Could be wrong on that, but it, 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 I would be surprised if there's like a huge change, as in Andrew Maddox drops. I don't think that's happening. He was Montrell King Williams is high on Andrew Maddox. And it's going to be interesting, that dynamic, because my understanding is is that Aldridge is coaching both sets of edges. So your five techs, yeah. six tech, he's oh, coaching. Interesting. And he's also coaching the outside linebackers. And that's not the first time that Vontrell King Williams and Aldridge have worked together. You know, right. Vontrell was Josh's GA at Liberty, like because Josh was the defensive line coach before Jeremy Garrett came in. Hmm. That's so right. So they they have a working relationship together. And it, I'm always you know, I, I look for quotes from coaches when I'm kind of studying up on them. And Jeremy Garrett talked about how him and Josh Aldridge taught similar things, had a similar teaching style, believed in the same philosophy as it pertains to defensive linemen. So I would think that Andrew Maddox, if he Jeremy Garrett really liked him, my guess is Josh Aldridge is probably going to stamp the seal of approval on that one as well. And and Aldridge is going to have a hand in D-line recruiting a little bit. Um, he has, actually. He, he I was talking to him, you know, I think it was last spring, about – some of the linebacker targets at the time was Joe Phillips, Demarcus Riddick. And um I in passing we mentioned the D line. He goes, you know, that's that's where my heart is, D line. You know, I gotta hear about those guys. So he he's he he loves D line. That's that's where he sort of cut his teeth, I guess you would say, as a coach. Yep. And he's getting back to that a little bit now. Toby Tiger, uh let's see here. Are you hearing anything yet concerning Kenyatta Watson's effect on recruiting in Atlanta? Uh, are any new recruits? Uh, being added to the board yet? I will say Kenyatta just started at Auburn on Monday morning officially, so he's been on the job maybe forty eight hours. I haven't heard anything. I wouldn't I wouldn't expect it to be anything immediate. This is going to be something we see over time. Um, so yeah, by the time you're hearing this, I think he's been on the job for forty eight hours. Yeah, the, go ahead, Cole. The, there is one recruit who who did mention Kenyatta without being prom, uh, prompted. Uh, well, maybe he was, but it was about – he's talking about Auburn, and he mentioned Ken, Kenyatta Watson being there now. That was a big deal. That would be Tyler Atkinson, who we just mm. talked about, probably the number one guy for the next class, I mean, in the country. Oh, yeah, so, he's got a relationship with Owen, I believe, as well. Correct. Tyler does. And I yep. want to give Zach Blackerby credit for this because he said it on his show this morning, and I heard it, and I thought it was ingenious. I think where Kenyatta Watson is going to pay off for this staff is in the transfer portal in this second mm. window coming up. You think about how many athletes come out of that 
area year over year, and they're potentially going to hit the transfer portal that already may have a relationship with Kenyatta Watson. I think that could be something to monitor for sure. I, I think that's where you're going to see the fruits of his labor pay off to begin with. I also think he's going to have a much bigger impact at Auburn than he did at Georgia Tech because Auburn's a, a much easier draw for a guy like him. It's hard to get top recruits to go to a school like Georgia Tech, no matter what techies want to tell you. Well, think about the academic requirements just to get in, Jeffrey. I mean, that's – look, I couldn't get into Georgia Tech. I'm going to be honest with you. Shit, I couldn't get into Auburn. <laughs> Had to go that Juco route, big dog. <laughs> oh, man, let's see. A. Hill, do you guys see this year's wide receiver class coming anything close? Anything close to that 2024 group? No, I don't. I can't, I can't imagine. You know, you I, would I, have to get Caleb Cunningham, who's going to visit Auburn March the 30th. Again, I think that's his second trip this calendar year. But you would have to get Caleb Cunningham. You would have to get Derek Smith. If he's your wide receiver, if he's going to play wide receiver, Dalen Upshaw. I, I see. This I mean, don't get me wrong. It's and, and, and even then, it's not close to. No, is it? Uh -uh. I, I still don't think it's no, close. Because Cam Coleman and Perry Thompson, that duo right. is just elite. And then Bryce Kane turned into what he is, and Michael Simmons is <laughs> would be the number you're, one guy talking, in in a usual Auburn receiver class. You're talking two top 50 depending on the site and rankings you look at two top 50 wide receivers and four top two top 150 can't top, remember top 200. 200 so they four top 200 not just wide receivers four top 200 players in the country, country overall yeah I, that was an insane haul i mean good scouting like cole talked about with bryce kane getting him in the fold early yeah. Malcolm Simmons getting him in the fold yes. earlier, and then obviously yes. doing what you had to do with Perry and Cam down the stretch. Those are two elite outside guys. I also don't think Auburn – I mean, I think they're going to put resources into it, don't get me wrong, but the same level of resources they were committed to putting into that last class because they had to have it, yeah. I think they're going to spread that in other spots. I think you're going to be yeah. – yeah. you're going to be putting those resources towards the offensive line in this class. There, you know, it, it's earmarked for that wide receiver class, but that folder is certainly not as thick as it was last year. I would think so. You, you know what's interesting, and and you're not wrong by saying it was early, Jayhead, for getting Bryce Kane and Michael Simmons in the boat, but you didn't get them in the boat until June. Summer. Big I know, camp. right? Uh, which, by the way, at this point, go back, to, rewind to February last year. Were we talking about Michael, Malcolm Simmons and Bryce Kane? I'd never heard of Bryce Kane. Malcolm, yes. Bryce Kane, no. Bryce Kane didn't pop on the radar until we found out he was visiting for a day. All right, right, so let me try to get ahead of the eight ball here uh, this year. I got a name for you, and I think this guy's going to be a big Auburn target. Okay. Tristan T.K. Norman, Montgomery, Alabama, Carver High School. Okay. Put on a show at the Under Armour event, and I've seen him before. He used to be at Pike Road. He transferred to Carver, um, I, and I can't confirm Auburn has interest. So. This is a guy I think will camp. I think it might be a similar deal to Bryce Kane where they watch him again in camp and go, yep, I like him. Let's get him. Wide receiver, and, quarterback, what uh, what position? He's a receiver. Receiver. Okay. Okay. And this is – this is, I think this class is going to look more like that. Now, you know, he's a sleeper right now. What will he be? What will he be? Does, does on three look at him eventually and go, now that's a four-star like they did with Bryce Kane? It's possible. Um, so I want to get ahead of that. I, th I really do believe he might be a guy that, that Auburn keys in on at some point. Tristan Norman. Tristan Norman. Keep an eye on Tristan Norman. Whoa, let's see. WDE John 10. Is this class shaping up to be more constructed off of flipping recruits like last cycle? No. I mean, I think it's certain spots probably, but – Overall, I mean, that's just the norm. I mean, in recruiting, forget the coat of right. I mean, yeah, kids flipping commit. recruits is more paramount now than ever. Think about how early these guys commit. I mean, Malik Altry committed over a year ago, right now. That's insane to me that sophomores are, are committing. Like, I was just trying to learn how to drive, man. You know what I mean? At 16, like, I, I wasn't committing to a university, so it's, I think. Like you said, Jeffrey, just by the nature of the beast, that it's it, it, flipping kids is just part of the business. But you're so far ahead right now by comparison yeah, to this time last absolutely. year. Absolutely. 
you got what eight commitments in the class already. You had two because you had Walker White and the cornerback that didn't even sign with us, Jaden Lewis, I think, was your other commitment at this point. Sure was. Fat Burnett was, I think, number three, and he didn't commit yeah, he to like March. April. April, right. Yeah. So you, you were rolling with two strong. You're potentially, by the time you get to the end of March, and I know we we were going to get a question about this, but Eric Winters and Tavares Dice are both talking about having decisions by the front end of April. I mean, that's kind of their timeline. So you Auburn, can be, Auburn, has, Auburn has two commitments in the 2026 class. So – the, 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 I guess his question is, Are is Auburn going to be playing catch-up like they were a year ago? No. Absolutely not. No. Um, they're, they're in front of that eight ball that Cole was talking about with this class. They're going to continue to be in front of it, just like that 2026 class is already starting to build. And, and, and it's going to be uh, certain guys you're going to have to flip. Yeah. Sure. And- Sure. Absolutely. To get the caliber of recruit you want in this class, you're going to have to flip a couple guys. Yeah. But well, I don't think you have to flip more than like three. You know what I mean? Like I, I okay. think that's probably what you're looking at. Let, okay. Let's just say that Alvin Henderson were to commit to Florida State. You're, you're, he's going to be a flip target for Auburn almost immediately. I mean, sure. that that's not going to be like, okay, well, you know, hope you have a good career at Florida State. Yeah. No, Deuces. he's the top target. Deuces Doesn't matter where he's again. committed. Yeah. <laughs> Alvin's so, Instagram. All right, let's see here. Trooper Taylor's towel. For those that have watched the tape, what kind of players are TJ uh, uh, Latif and Cutter Woods? Any comps that come straight to mind? Nice. I like that question. Uh, Cutter Woods, I'm going to comp him to Sean White. Mm. I think. Hey, all fans would take another Sean White right now. Hell yeah, they would. Yeah, they would. <laughs> so long as he's not, you know. Well, <laughs> his extracurriculars are on par. Yeah. On the field. Yeah, right. On the field for sure. Uh TJ Latif. He's got some dual threat ability to him, man. And he's he's got some real arm talent. I'm impressed with what I've seen from TJ Latif. And I just You gave a uh, you gave a comp for him not too long ago. I think it was it Kyle Frazier? No, I'm come on now. Don't, don't, don't do me like that. <laughs> no, it was uh, Peyton Thorne. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, a, little, a little closer to home. I thought yeah. you did do a comp for him not too long ago. I and it was... No, I don't think I did one for him. Okay. Uh, I, I need to look again and see if I, who I can compare him to for Auburn fans so they kind of have a, a, a gist of what he looks like. But he's a, he's a good athlete. He's got real arm talent. He doesn't have a lot of experience playing quarterback. So what happens with him – when Ken Austin goes to watch him throw is going to really drive that recruitment from the Auburn angle. Now there are other teams that are interested. I think Nebraska's in on him and they've started to recruit him pretty heavy. Uh, a couple other schools. So he's, he is, he's wanted. It's not like he's somebody that's lacking for offers for sure. Let's see. I'm trying to think of a comp there. I, I, I'm not coming up with one right this at the moment, but I would consider TJ Latif, uh, a pro style quarterback with the ability to run if he has to. Sure. He's not really looking for it. He's more of a stand in the pocket and deliver kind of guy, which is, you know, he told me that on the phone. He said that's what he wants to be. He wants to be a pro style quarterback. So, uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think of who that might be, but maybe maybe a Spencer Rattler type. I, well, I'm not sure. if you're looking at Hugh Freeze quarterbacks, probably some Chad Kelly to him. Uh, but that's, you know, as far as from a mobility standpoint, he's got it, but he doesn't necessarily sure. want to get out yeah. and run all the time. He's not going to be a featured runner in the same way that some of the other quarterbacks under Hugh Freeze have been with good yeah. arm talent. I, yeah. I don't know that I want to go Chad level just yet because I thought Chad Kelly was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. At Ole he's a gamer. He's For a sure. Gamer. University of Auburn. How many commits? This is the question I was going to ask you, Cole, before we started, so I'm glad I held off. How many commits do you expect to see in March, and who are the top names you're keeping an eye on? Well, I made a statement, so I better back it up, right? Um, Tavares Dice has now moved his mm-hmm. to March, and I like Auburn there. Okay. Um, here's one for you. Zealous Hicks is a 2026. He is going to commit in March. So, I really like Auburn there, guys. I, I I am considering a prediction for Zealous Hicks, 
And okay. he, he is elite. That's an elite DB player. Safety. 6'3". Wow. He's 6'3". That's Juju's teammate. Yes, he's at Carrollton. Um, had some great things to say about Auburn. I'm telling you, th- this one, I would be somewhat shocked if it was someone other than Auburn. So I am thinking about a prediction there for that reason. Charles Kelly. When I asked him, I said, well, why do you keep – because he was at three games and he visited in January. He's going to visit again in March before he makes a decision. I was like, what is it? He goes, uh, it's Charles Kelly. So, if you were looking for somebody that Charles Kelly has an effect on, I think it's Zealous Hicks. Okay. There you go. That's a good, And that's a good one to have an effect on. Zealous oh, Hicks is an elite son. And then watch out for one of these quarterbacks, Cutter Woods, TJ Latif. I think that could happen in March. Okay. Um, there's others uh, that, that are not coming to mind right now. But keeping an eye on both of those guys to see if and when they visit. And Eric Winters did tell, I think our Georgia side, I believe he told Rusty that he plans on doing an April okay. time frame commitment. So that's another guy to keep your eye on that he's ready to shut this thing down. And that the top two schools were Auburn and Georgia. Okay. Uh, that sounds right. Decone 24 been a prominent poster. Fantastic yeah. poster. Decon uh, does, does God's work, son. He does. <laughs> uh, which edge edge recruits? This is a tough position. We 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 we've mentioned this several times in the past. This is tough right now. Uh, but which edge edge recruits do uh, does Auburn stand uh, in good shape with to land? Is uh, are there any? So you got if, JJ Falk in the class if he's an edge. Yeah. If Auburn were to go after CJ May. I, like sure. really hard. I think they would have a great shot. I just don't know what they're going to do with him yet. But I don't like Auburn's chances with Zion Grady. Um, no, I, I don't I think like Auburn's gotta... chances with Jared Smith. Mm-mm. No, the gra- the gas kid. I, I actually, yeah. I, I think we're in the mix there for sure. I agree. I agree. Decon, holla back in about a month on that maybe. Maybe we'll have a little bit better idea. Uh, let's see. Beef Stew 0702. Who would you guys predict to be Auburn's starting free safety and strong safety this season? Great recruiting question here from Beef Stew. <laughs> hey, let's entertain it. It's the offseason. <laughs> nah, right? Hey, they're recruits. They were they're former recruits. That's right. Uh Laquan Robinson. Yes. And the the kid, the transfer from Texas. There you go. The Williams kid. That's his name? Mm, man, I got to look at it. This Jaron is, Williams. There you go. Thompson. Jaron Thompson. That's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Cole doesn't think that's funny anymore. <laughs> it, it, it gets me every time. Hey, as long as it yeah, makes me feel good. That's one of those that you just give it, you, know, you just give it a, all right, then, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Horace from three, something that never happened. Let's see. What's the floor and ceiling for where our 2025 recruiting class finishes two to seven? I think we said it. I think, man, do you see top five? I Right now, no. Mm-mm, I don't either. I, I think my number has adjusted. And I think I, I said I think I said four to uh, four yeah. to seven was the what the mark I put on it. I'm going to probably change that from five to ten. That's where I see this class. Just because, again, to be top five, you got to have multiple five stars, right? Yeah. Like you, and I don't, I don't know where the five stars are going to come from right now. Right now, uh, again, Cam Coleman wasn't a five star at the stage. That's right. I sure as hell didn't think we had a shot with Perry Thompson. Completely, tra- I mean. More power to you, Fred, on that one because you had it. Okay, I, yeah. I, I did not think we were going to be in the mix there. Probably not in February. I think Fred was saying. Oh no, 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 no. That's right. He, he was. Uh, no, he was a big cat guy, wasn't he? Well, he did. It, Perry did flip and big cat, but Fred was on the Perry train. And, like, give him. I, I'll give him his props. He was on that one early, and I basically said, "You're crazy, man." Hey, one out of ten ain't bad. I'm telling you. <laughs> Uh, so uh, let's see here. Auburn, all, 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 AU Brian, all Brian, uh, 98. What two guys did we miss on that probably would be at Auburn from the last recruiting class? Class, God, I can't read. If NIL was not a thing last year, Cam Coleman, Ooh, 
Yeah, for sure Joseph, on that one. Joseph Phillips. He Joseph Phillips said it. Wait, what two guys did we miss on? What two guys did we miss on that, that probably, probably would be at Auburn if so they're saying who is not in the class that would have been in the class? If, oh, so they were bought away from Auburn. Uh Kamarion Franklin. Uh, yeah. For sure. For sure on that one. One hundred percent. Um Oh, you know who? Jalewis Solomon. No, no. Ryan, that was Williams. Auburn. Ryan Williams. Ryan Williams, maybe. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, uh, let's see. Let me give. I, a, I don't think. I don't think it would be Cohen Eccles. I think. I don't think so. No, he didn't come to mind. I would. Uh, Kamarion Franklin would have been the easiest and biggest, right? I mean, that was he was Auburn until he wasn't. L.J. McRae. What do you got? I mean, I think Florida did what they had to do in the end on that. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, um, I don't think, I don't think the NIL, the NIL deals were all that different there. Okay, I, I trust your assessment on that one, Cole. I think I they were like very, very close, and and Florida, I, you know, they got the edge because it was the in-state school and all that. I, I think that's what it was. I felt like they were very close going into National Signing Day. What happened in those hours Ooh. after he postponed, I feel like that changed. I got a good one. K.J. Bolden. K.J. Bolden. I, I believe that one is true. <laughs> I mean. Not car, I, kn- that- I know that. The- not car. The people I talked to were very confident about KJ Bolden the day before. And well, I take two days before National Signing Day. And then the day before National Signing Day, that whole tone just started to change. Uh, that's that's it. <laughs> I'm trying to think uh position wise, quarterbacks, wide receivers, not car if anybody there. Uh offensive line. Can't think of any Kamari on Franklin. Tight ends, maybe. He struck out on a lot of tight ends. Yeah, but how much was NIL a factor for those guys? Yeah, you know, uh, not, I'd say it was for Roger Saliapaga. Saliapaga, Caleb Odom. I just they were never, very, they, they weren't, you know, Auburn was, I think, on three and 24 7 had this kid like a five star. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Auburn didn't have it that way. Uh, so there you go, man. Um, I'll tell you what, that's a good question. Um, if I, if I could think of question. anything else. Uh, but yeah. Kamari on Franklin. I, I, I do know this. Um, in this, I, I know why the question is asked, and, it, and this might be some good insight for you. There were guys, even guys that went to Auburn, that decided to go to that school for less. I, I agree. Can pretty much confirm that. No, it's so, yeah. There, there are guys out there who decided to go to a school that was less. The offer was less than it was some elsewhere. It happened. No, I I agree with that. Look, I think good recruiters, uh, honestly, it, it, the way you pitch it, sometimes you got every NIL deal has to be ballpark. Like you can't not be ballpark and end up, but you don't always have to be the top bidder. I think yeah. fit NFL development relationship with the coach, all that stuff can play a factor. Where you're going to take less, but you, it's not going to be considerably less, right? Like it's not going to be like, hey man. School X is offering me like 1.5 million, and you're coming in at about 200 grand. Like, nah, man, that's that that's not a thing, right? But, but if you're ballpark, yeah, I, it, absolutely. There were kids that took less that came to Auburn and went to other schools. And in fact, we heard kids say that when Alan, when Nick Saban stepped down from Alabama, I took less to go to the University of Alabama because Nick Saban was there. 100. Yep. percent What about Jeremiah Beeman? Ooh, ooh, that's a good one. No. I, I don't know the NIL is the reason he – no, his it was family for him. Remember, his dad or mom was a really big Alabama, and that meant a lot to him. Um, but he, he's another one. I'm just looking at names. Uh, Preston, Preston Talmua. Saquon Patterson? No. I, there was a, At one point, they looked, they looked like they were going to get him. Yeah, I thought so. We, and, I mean – our intel at one point was us in Michigan, or at least yeah. that's not what I was hearing from one source. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Miami made it easy for him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
All right, that's good. Yeah. Uh, let's move along. I, I can sit here and scroll all day because that's an interesting question. Uh, let's see here, Robert Dale. Robert Dale. Uh, can Darius Reddick, Cole mentioned him earlier, do we still need to monitor this former commit? How does he stack up talent-wise versus Fegans? Mm. Cole says, yes, keep an eye on this kid. Don't think it's yeah. over. Uh, let's see. Uh, Zach Etheridge was big in his recruitment, but with Crime Dog there, Wesley McGriff, there's some continuity. Same way with Vontrell King-Williams and Jeremy Garrett. So, Cole, has well, stack up talent-wise? He's I, good. I I know what people are thinking. You flip from Auburn to UCF, ah, you're not that good. You're wrong. This guy is legit. I mean, I, I, I think that if you were able to keep Kendarius Reddick and then get Anquan Figgins, that's the best safety class in the country. I don't see anybody beating that. Maybe. I mean, Alabama always has a good safety class. You know, Georgia always has a good safety class. But to me, that's, that'd be a tough one to beat. Anquan Figgins and Reddick. I, I love Reddick. I think he fits in a lot of different places. So, to me, that was a huge, huge loss. And for that reason, I just don't see Auburn giving up on that. Hey, you know what? I, I was thinking about, about that former question, that previous question. I'm not looking at the Alabama and the Georgias. I'm looking at the Ole Misses. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, right. You remember, you remember at Coley's, uh the yeah. office of my man? William, oh, yeah, yeah, William Eccles, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so, anyways, Ole Miss would have been a school that I would have looked at their commitment list and went, what you about, know, uh, t- uh, Reese Baker, Tulane, oh, they yeah. got him, you know, De- definitely NIL there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, let's see. Well, we got one more, Zach. All right, here we go. Game time 34. What is the best decade? Oh, easy Auburn football. The eighties, hands down, no question. That's to get four SEC championships in ten years. Yeah, man. Yeah, Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson, yep. m- multiple other NFL Randy players. Campbell, Lionel James, Brent Fullwood, <sighs> Tracy Rocker, Ooh. Tracy freaking Rocker, Kevin Green, Kurt Crane. Green. Kurt, dude, Kurt Crane was the man back in the day, son. Kevin Powell. Uh, God, who's the guy that works in the AD's office now? Freddie Wigan, Trey Gaines, <laughs> Lawyer Tillman, mm-hmm. Walter Reeves, Ed King, Tommy Ag, Tommy freaking Ag. Yes, sir. Ben Tamborone, Triple Option, Jeff Berger, Jeff Berger. There's a Get good one. Some son. Getting Shane, fight. Shane. No, Shane. You say Randy no. Campbell? Hell yeah, I said Randy Campbell. <laughs> who was the uh, – Playing with a linebacker mask. Yeah, he did. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Running my that wishbone offense. Watch, my dad's going to watch this show just be going, yeah, yeah, the whole time. I'm just – I'm going back through my Auburn football cards. You remember all those football cards? Yeah, <laughs> Stacy Searles. Uh, Stacy Searles. Mm-hmm. Um, Is he still at Georgia? Yeah, he is. Stacy's still there. I'm. I mean, I'm shocked he's still coaching. I'm gonna be honest. Him and Rodney still coaching is. It blows my mind. I figured both those guys would have retired within the last. Rodney couple Garner, years. Ben Tamborello, ladies. Ben Tamborello, son. Was he 70s or 80s? Oh, he was 80s, man. I don't, I don't remember 70s. Yeah, he was. He was 80s, I think. You're right, because Di got him out of Birmingham, and that was. When you get when you land, when you're Auburn and you land a kid over Alabama out of Birmingham, and they wanted him, that's saying something, man. Uh, yep. Yeah. So yes, the eighties still, still true, still true to this day. Iron Bowl coming to Auburn. Pat Dye. Yes, the eighty nine game. It, who was the quarterback in the eighty nine game? I'm trying to think of his name. He was out of uh, North Florida. African American quarterback Reggie uh, freaking slack, dude. There you go. There he was out of the he was out of the panhandle. Yeah, out of Mil- was... Milton, Florida, right? Yes, Reggie freaking slack. Alexander Wright, Al Del Shane, Greco, Shane Wasden, Shane Wasden. He lives right his down little, the road. His, his little feet, he run out. He take off. He, he, he's fast as hey for real. Oh, but Shane remember, Watson. Shane really? Watson lives about. Two or three minutes as the crow flies that way. You remember when Keith McCants, his big ass, 
Yes, dude. Track down Shane Watson in the 89 game, I believe. Stacy Danley, James Joseph. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. Um, Bostic was 90s, right? He was, nine, he, yeah. he was just 90s. into the 90s. He came 92. in after James Joseph and Stacey Danley in 89. James That's right. Uh, 92. Was that his big Boston run? 92? 93. Yeah. 93. Yeah, Boston started in 92, 93. But 93 Boston has his shoulder pads up here. Dude, just – I mean, him and Stephen Davis in the same backfield, that's Man. that's insane. I Kevin Green. I, I know you said Kevin Green, but Kevin Green is awesome, dude. The sack master? Yeah. Yeah. And then who was the number one? Andre Bruce, right? Oh my gosh! Yeah, Andre Bruce. Atlanta. I, mean, I know he was the. I don't. Of course, I didn't watch Auburn football in the eighties. I know he was the number one pick. Was he like that good? Do, do y'all know? You had him and Tracy Rocker on the same D line, man. I mean, that was. And I think he was an outside linebacker, if I remember correctly. Yeah, he in was the, in the thirty-four. Carlos Cheatham. <sighs> I'm going to forget somebody. My dad watches this show. And he's, I know, my, he, he, my he's going to text me after this one's over and be like, son, you missed out on this one and this he's one. Going, this one. My dad's going to throw his phone across the room. He's going to be so mad we missed I can't believe people. you left these out. Look, I'll never forget being a kid. And we just, like, I was nine, I think, or eight in that 1993 undefeated season. And I can remember walking around my house saying, like, Terry Bowden's a better coach than Pat Dye. <sighs> And my dad heard me say that, and he turned around, and that he came around and said, "I don't ever want to hear that shit again." <laughs> no. <laughs> Nineteen eighty. Oh, uh, all right. Well, I could, we could sit here and talk about the eighties all day, as far as I'm oh, concerned. I know, man. It, it, that's the golden age of Auburn football, hands down, in my opinion. Now, look, you got you got spots and pockets, obviously. Sure. Tommy Tuberville's two thousand four year, and that run he went on from 04 to 06 was great. The two year stretch that Buster Brown had, you know, 93, 94, 21 and one. Yep. 21 and one. Gene Chiswick's national championship, Gus's first couple years, but not the consistency that when Die had it running. I mean, you're talking about multiple 10 win seasons in a row, four SEC championships. It just hadn't been, I mean, it hasn't been that level of consistent since. James Brooks was on the 80 team. I just don't consider him an 80s guy. I mean, he was the prior era, right? Like he was. Yeah, he was a 70s guy for me. Yeah. But a heck of a running back for sure. I mean, probably one of the, I mean, top 10 all time, I would think. I'm just trying to think of anything, anybody. We're not leaving anybody crazy out. I'm glad you said Reggie Slack. He was, man, between, it was tough, dude. Between Randy Campbell, Jeff Berger, and Reggie Slack. Man. Dude, those got me through my my in elementary and junior high. Yeah, dude. And you had Stan White coming off those guys. Yeah. Whew. All right, bonus question. Hamburg, damn, we need to shut up. It's not. Uh, <laughs> if the football team had to fill a starting five for basketball, who are you rolling with? Wow. Ooh. Okay. Give me Rivaldo Fairweather. Yeah, that was the first thing that popped to mind. I'm always me, going tight ends first. Give me Cam Coleman. Rivaldo Fairweather. Yeah, Cam Coleman. Oh, oh, let's see. oh do I do you want a uh, favorite Edwin in there? Big old tall center. Who's gonna be your center? Who's gonna be your five? It, it, Tyler favorite, Johnson. Play, favorite plays basketball. And so did Tyler yeah. Johnson for that matter. Tyler Johnson looks like a basketball player. Uh okay. So that's your center. That's or, your five. You put uh put Percy Lewis down there. Shoot. Steve Purse. I think, Perry, I think Perry Thompson. No, he runs track. I was thinking, I was trying to think who 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 still plays basketball. Who would be your point? That's what Walker. I'm no, uh, Hank Brown plays basketball, doesn't he? Oh, freaking Henry! Hell yeah! Yeah, Hank, I was Hank, say. Hank's got the look now. He's, he he'll be your Scotty Pullman off guard. Yeah, I think Hank Brown plays. Who's running the one? That's what I'm trying to think. Who, who, who's that guy? Who we got that's a point guard? I'm thinking DBs. Say, I almost want to say Demari Austin. Something about him tells me he would be a good point guard. Hmm. Maybe, maybe, maybe Philip Dukes is, is mentoring him there. Philip Dukes used to run some heck of point guard down there at the uh, the student rec. Now <laughs> did he? Yeah, man. I bet. Uh, that's a good question. I, I tell you what, I'm going to put that to the football players throughout the spring. And I'm going to come back to you, Hamburglar, with a better starting five from the they, football team. They need to do one of those um, like 
Twitter interaction things, they do a video where they come up to the camera and answer the questions. Yeah. They would, that would be good. Who's your starting five? Yeah. Write that one down. Auburn football Twitter. All right. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's dish out some how batches and get out of here. All right. I'll have six. Okay. Uh, I got two. Go for it. NB Weagle. N. Yep. N. The letter N. N. B. Weagle. You got it. Okay. How about and you? North Georgia Tiger. How about you? Spelled out oh, North yeah. Georgia Tiger. Oh, yeah. All North right. GA Tiger, right? Yeah. Where North GA Tiger. Okay. Okay. My bad. bad. We know you. We know I can't spell. So don't. Jeffrey will be looking for that name <laughs> for the next hour. <laughs> All right. All right. Cool. I got, uh, I got five. Trying okay. to again keep it to three, but we'll we'll go five. Uh, B one tiger. B one tiger. Okay. He uh had some words of encouragement, man. You know, a little, little encouragement. All I'll right. take it. I like it. Trey Belk. Yeah. And that one, man, just, Trey Belk's just been around for a while. I don't think I've given him one. He needs one. He, he's, Good for him. You know what? These guys, the people that stick around in the dead period, I love you. Got a. You're my favorite. You're my favorite. That goes to you, Coochie, off the Amet, you know, all these guys. Um, I can't give Coochie like the fourth one in a row, though. I'm not going to do it. So give me yeah, LA Whip. Coochie. LA Whip's a good one. Uh, LA Whip is a fantastic one. Give, make that times two for me, okay. Big Al. Hey, here, you might get another times two here with D Cone 24. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. This guy's on fire. He's get, on my yeah. list. D Cone gets me at least once a day, man, because I, I'm not able to be on the board right now. My job is just killing me. But when I do get on, it's always D Cone and it's always something that just catches me the right way, man. And then my last one, uh, very deserving D Wayne 80. Give my man D Wayne 80. All right. I like it. All right. Let me go through. I, I, I just added one to my. How about you, Mandingo? Hey, yeah. And, and, and listen. I'm sorry, big dog. I love you. I had to ban him today for two, for I had to give it. He was posting about Bruce's, you know, how Bruce gets on Twitter sometimes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I, you know, hey, I don't play favorites, big dog, but you are one of mine. But uh, he'll be back Thursday. <laughs> so uh, how about you, man? Dingo, love you, big dog. Great contribution. Uh, let's see. Leo the Tiger. How about you, big dog? That's a good one. How about you, Sir Donkey Lincoln? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that name. <laughs> oh, that name alone. Uh, how about you, Auburn Blue? How about you, uh, Mike Dickinson? <laughs> how about you, uh, Meredith Tiger? Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. And we all, how about you, big dog kid from Selma? Yes. Uh, yeah, times yeah, 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 yep. Yeah, that, that's a cube right there. And Edward, I'm sure. We, yeah. Yeah, that's a great uh edward's fantastic we love him part of the show all, yes, as always on the college show if y'all haven't listened to edward on sunday nights man you absolutely should and uh good dude good dude one, been thinking about him one more for you blake r right. for, start, for starting the appreciation thread for I, edward I, I, absolutely good call big dog blake r he, he's another one that uh, oh blake around during the dead period too i like that yeah mm -hmm. all right leo tiger sir donkey licking lincoln <laughs> <laughs> Auburn Blue, Mike Dickinson. How about you, Meredith Tiger? How about you, Kid? How about you, NB Weagle? How about you, North Georgia Tiger? How about you, B1 Tiger? Trey Belk, LA Whip times two, D Cone 24 times two, two D Wayne 80, Mandingo, and Blake R. Love y'all guys, man. Appreciate y'all guys. Y'all are awesome. You allow us to continue doing what we love to do, which is talk to you about Auburn football and recruiting. Well, that's going to do it for the day's show. We're going to be back Sunday night for the call-in show, 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, again, if you haven't already and you need some help in Auburn, Opelika, Lee County, you need to uh, find somebody to sell your house or find you a new one. Look no further for Miss Jessica Andrews with the Talents Group, 334-704-4442. She's a five-star realtor. Just ask you ahead. All right, folks, thank you all so much for listening. Thanks so much for uh, for watching. We really appreciate it, man. For Cole, for Jay Head, for Zach in the back, I'm Jeffrey Lee. I'll see you Sunday night. Stay out of that left lane.